Okay, uh, in this tutorial we're going to work at, uh, with text fields uh, that the user can type into and uh, we'll be able to manipulate that data by the time you're done. Uh, we're going to look at a different way to handle button clicks. We utilized uh, an on-click listener and there was a rather elaborate way to set up a button. Uh, that works and that's tried and true, but there is an easier way to do it. Um, and let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead I'll create my new uh, project here and it's going to be an Android application project. I'll go ahead and I'll call this simple edit text. The text fields that we type into, they're called, it's an edit text field. That's where the user can type something in and um, we can then extract information from those fields. And that can be useful, you know, uh, in this particular class, as, uh, as fast as you guys are moving and as good as some of you are, uh, we may get to the point where we're utilizing information like that and, and uh, maybe interacting with a web server or uh, maybe interacting with some of the internal databases that are available to us. But uh, giving the user the ability to sort of authenticate with a username and password, for example, uh, it makes sense. Okay? And I'm going to leave this as um, com.example. I don't plan to publish this. So I'm going to say uh, API 11. I'm going to go next. Next. I'm going to leave all the defaults. And this is a blank activity with fragment. We're also going to learn how to access a fragment from within the main activity. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do, just based on the setup here, is I'm going to delete my Android support version 4 jar. I'm going to click OK. And uh, get rid of that dependency issue. Seems to be the first thing I have to do every time I create an app nowadays. Um, OK, so, uh, you know, if you look here, we've got our main activity class, right? And we've got our uh, placeholder fragment, right? So if I were to create, like, a string, you know, here and I were to say string my text and uh, you know this is would then be um, available to the entire class here you know if I were to come up here and say inside of on create inside of main activity right you know if I were to type just as an example um, in on create if I were to do something like um, you know my text equals hello Right, it's going to throw an error because these are two separate classes, and the variable my text doesn't exist inside of main activity. Right, there's a way to get a handle and uh, on on fragments from within main activity, so that you can utilize all the stuff that's in the fragment, just like it would be in your main activity. So it's it's actually pretty easy to do um, with. Uh, a little copy and paste goodness. So we'll be looking at uh, how to do that as well. So we're going to do edit text, we're going to look at a new way to do button clicks, and we're going to look at how to get a handle on a fragment from within main activity. So let's uh, let's start with uh, our layout file, and that's going to be uh, inside of our fragment main here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll go to the graphical layout under text fields. Now we've got our text view up here. Uh, you, you know, if these edit texts have several different ways you can go. First name, last name, you can have the password protected. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see the different types of input that we can accept from edit text. Um, I'm just going to use a simple text here, and I'm going to go one. I'm going to create three of them, two and three. All right. And, you know, I've got a resource document inside of the Edmodo folder. Easy enough to Google this if you'd like. You don't have to go to Edmodo um, to find it. You can see I'm utilizing Stack Overflow all the time. Uh, and I pulled this. If you Google, like, my fancy method, you'll probably find the post that I utilized to get this little XML snippet here. And it's just a button that sits under my last edit text that uses a method called my fancy method every time we click it. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that because it's a little easier. So I'm going to copy this little button snippet here. And uh, again, you could just drag a button onto the screen inside of Eclipse and just add the Android layout below, which would already be there. Uh, just adding the Android on click func functionality manually would probably be just as easy. Okay, um, and I'm going to go to the XML file. And I'm going to drop this right here. I'm going to save it. And when we go back to the graphical layout, you can see we now have a little button, right? OK, so, um, so we've got three edit text fields. We have a button. We have a text view. Uh, in, in my uh, humble opinion, I think the first thing we should probably do 
is initialize those inside of our fragment so that we uh, have you know references that are programmatic that match up to the XML file right so I'm gonna put these references um, up at the top of the class all right and I'll go ahead and I'll say edit text and we have three of them ET1 right and again we have a copy and paste here two three I have a text view all right called TV one and you know I don't think I'm gonna do anything with a button inside of this class but I'm gonna go ahead just to be on the safe side and I'm gonna create a little reference to it now they're all underlined red so the fastest thing to do is control shift O and we're gonna organize our imports so that we import these libraries that are needed all right and then inside of on create, we're going to go right to the a good spot here, right above return our return statement, and we're now going to link these instances to the XML file, uh, the layout file that we just created. So this would be like et1 equals, and we've got a cast. It is an edit text, all right, and it's root view dot, and then just you know utilize these menus that Eclipse is giving us. R.ID dot edit text one. All right. And if it auto completed, you know it's good. Now if you saw edit text two and edit text three in the drop down menu, you know that you can just copy and paste and do that very quickly. I'm gonna do the same thing for text view. You know, anytime I start writing an application like this, I just I start to I start to feel the money. You know, it's like it's like I just know a million people are going to buy this app, and then I wait three months and I only make five dollars. And you know, I wouldn't say it's deflating, but uh, you know, it's good to have hope. Let me put it that way, because there's a huge huge audience for your apps out there. Um, let's see what's going on. R dot ID dot Put T, there it is, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, initialize my button as well, just to be on the safe side in case I, I do wanna use it for something here, who knows. Root view dot, find view by ID, R dot ID dot, and I'm calling this one my button, okay. All right, now, so what I've done inside of the fragment is I've declared three different, or five different variables representing our edit text fields, our text view and our button and now I've associated those with the uh, entries that I have in our XML layout file so take a second and make sure you have all that set up okay uh, hopefully you've got all this set up now let's take a look at our main activity up here at the top now uh, I guess the first order of, of business in our main activity is to get a handle on our fragment right um, and so right up here at the top of the class, I'm going to create a global class reference to this. And uh, I'm going to say, uh, let's take a look here. Let me look at my resource document. And it is just, uh, it, it is an instance of our placeholder fragment. And I'm going to call it fragment OBJ. So I'm just going to copy that first part there. And again, you know, we've got our class and we have an instance of it, right? Boom. But we, we haven't set it up so that it's going to work correctly at this point. Um, so after our if statement here in our onCreate, right before the closing bracket for our onCreate method inside of our, um, oh gosh, wait, yeah, inside of our main activity, um, I'm going to now use our uh, this get support fragment manager method find fragment by ID and we're going to now basically associate this fragment object with the fragment that is in the the main activity layout file it's the same thing we did with um, edit text and text view except now we're doing it with a fragment and we're just utilizing uh, we're casting it to a placeholder fragment and instead of using find view by ID we're using get support fragment manager all right same concept boom all right, and you can see if I open up activity main.xml, 
that we have a simple fragment that's been laid out and it does indeed have an ID of container all right um, I was a little leery of fragments but I, I have determined that they are cool and they work they, they don't cause any any real problems that I've seen so far. I mean, in fact, it enhances your ability to work. You can reuse these fragments. You can take a fragment and that you've created and and reuse it. Uh, it, it creates all. It gives you all kinds of options. I, I really do um, like this concept. Uh, so anyway. Um, so I've got my fragment object that has an ID of container and everything's been set up correctly. All right. Well, this leaves our, our final task here, which um, inside of fragment main, our button here, uh, we've said, okay, every time we click this thing, we're going to call a method called my fancy method. All right? And, and so we need to create that. Otherwise, the application will crash if we run it because it'll look for that. It won't find it, and the application will crash out, and the, error, uh, the user will get an error, and you will start getting nasty emails on the market, let me tell you. Let me tell you, it is not um, for the timid on the Android market. If your application crashes, people get ugly fast, man. So you, you want to do everything you can to make sure, at the very least, your application doesn't crash too often. Uh, the, yeah, the developer console that uh, Google provides you with, it gives you crash reports, and you kind of want to monitor that. If you publish an app and 50 people download it and you see 200 crashes, you probably want to pull that app and uh, review those and figure out where the crash is happening. It'll give you a kind of a, a log cat type report, and it will tell you where the crash is happening. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, but you really want to do um, everything you can to make sure that your application does not force close on people because that will... Uh, definitely definitely invoke ire in your audience all right okay so anyway uh, here we've got on click my fancy method and now we're gonna keep the application from crashing by creating that so here I am in main activity and you can see I've got my on create method all right and so uh, I've got opening bracket closing bracket and so this is a good place to create a new method right so I'm gonna go public and this is how you do it public void name of method my fancy method and it accepts always it's going to accept the argument view v all right and that's view is going to be the button all right and this is where we go in and now we're going to do two things we're going to extract whatever the user is typed from the edit text field and we're going to load it into a string variable all right so i'm going to say okay i've got my fragment object all ready to go that represents my fragment class and has everything in it and it's fragment object dot well, let's create a string string and I'll call this input equals fragment object dot e, let's do dot and then it's gonna be et1 and this is how we get information from an edit text like this dot uh, get text dot to string okay all right, and what that's going to do is it's going to reach out and it's going to snag whatever the user has typed into that edit text field, and it's going to load it into the string input. All right, and then we're just going to change our text view for this. It's going to be um, we're going to do it. it. Text view does exist in our fragment, so it's fragment object dot tv one dot um, set text. You guessed it, input. All right. And let's uh, let's see if I, I did this all right. I'm going to go run as Android application. And we're going to hope that this doesn't go all crashy in the face on us here. Let me pause it while it loads up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type uh, test123456. Here we go. Click. And it crashes. What did I do wrong? I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to find out. We're going to make this a learning experience. Uh, hold on just a second. Okay, so I did find the error. And, you know, I'm not one to... Uh, yeah, this confuses me. And yeah, I'm going to post this video to YouTube just hopefully to get some input on why this is. Because I, I'm i confused by this one. Okay, so um, if I have fragment object here inside of on create and main activity and I set up fragment object here okay 
Um, I'm assuming on create gets called, and I would assume fragment object gets initialized here. Um, but if I run it, right, it says down here that there's um, a null pointer uh, exception. Let's take a look here. This null reference. Let me zoom in on this. Okay, so you can see here the um, null pointer exception. It says placeholder fragment is a null, right? And so that means that when I try to utilize it inside of my fancy method, it is telling me that this here has not been initialized, right, correctly. Now, if I take fragment object here and I use this, um, okay, um, if I initialize it by using find fragment by ID inside of the on click method, so when we click the button, we initialize it and then we start using things, okay, it, it appears to work. Now, um, I mean, so when I run it now by taking this initialization here and putting it inside of the on click method, okay, here we are with the application open. If I type in one, two, three here and then click, you can see the text view does change. All right, so why that is, um, why if I take this particular uh, call here and place it inside of onCreate, uh, does it wind up being null? And then if I take it and I actually put it inside of our button click method, it, it's not null. Um, I'm, I, I just, I'm not quite sure why that's happening at this point. Um, if anybody has an answer that might enlighten me there, might give me some insight, I, I'd appreciate it. Um, but it does work if you do it like this for now, that's fine. Uh, as long as you're utilizing these things uh, correctly, uh, you should get a button press that changes the text view. So, so the object is this, uh, simple start here, is uh, I would like you to take this app now and um, modify it so that when the user types in uh, three different words, one, two, three, uh, when you click the button, it just prints the three words separated by spaces. So the brown fox would print the brown fox. And if you've got that, you've got the simple edit text together. Uh, once you're done with that, I'll have a more complicated challenge. I'll ask you to create a new app independently where you'll utilize a lot of the different concepts we've talked about up to this point. And uh, it'll be a little more challenging. It'll require that you sort of understand how all these things work. If you've got all your references together and you've written all the programs up to this point, you shouldn't have a problem sort of looking at it and hashing it out and uh, and sort of being successful with the next challenge. So thanks for watching this and uh, um, good luck.